too hot in here for this. I'm wearing shorts. I don't like wearing shorts. I've had to close all the windows. I'm boiling in here. Yeah, today I thought I'd rank every single Doctor Who episode. Yeah, that's that's all there is. <laughs> I have said in the past that my opinions change on a dime, and that is very much true. But I still thought it'd be a lot of fun. That's what I'm doing. It's fun. I don't take this too seriously. Although these will be at time of recording my genuine opinions. Rose! Yes! It is one of, if not the, best series opener of the entire 60 year run of the show. The end of the world. Not quite as good as Rose, but a lot of fun. It does include Toxic. That slaps. I, don't, I wouldn't call it an S. I wouldn't. I don't think so. There's a lot of weak elements. Like all the random alien creatures were like, it, it feels like they just wasted the budget on that. They didn't have, like just go to a costume, it doesn't, yeah. Like you could have put so much money towards the rest of the series then. You, 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 you splurged. I'll give it a solid A. I think that is an A. A very solid story. A great introduction to the wider world of Doctor Who by going into the future and into, well, space. And Rose isn't an annoying bitch yet. She's an entertaining bitch. Win? The Unquiet Dead. Mark Gatiss's first foray into the new series. And honestly, his best. It's also one of the best introductions of a historical person into the cast, so this time Charles Dickens, the actor, I forget his name, he is spectacular. The Gelf are really creepy, I like how it's timed into the whole time war thing, which is only hinted at at this time, which is bizarre to go back and see. Oh wait, no, he does say it at the end of End of the World. But you get it, it's still like early days. Hey, this is sweet. Hey, fever! <laughs> God looked down at me and said no. This guy will be allergic to flowers. He's gonna die young. That's another A. That is another A, the unquiet dead. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. I need the engagement. Oh yes, this is a good time to mention that I'm putting the two-parters together. Uh, I was gonna rank them separately, but there's too many episodes for that. It's 13 series, for Christ's sake. Aliens of London and World War Two. It's pretty good. I like the Slovene. They're fucking ridiculous, although they were really better suited for the Sarah Jane adventures in hindsight. Like, it's no wonder that the Slitheen and the Blatherine were more Sarah Jane adventures focused and they popped up all the time, even though the design is... They fart. I love it, don't get me wrong. I'm shaking my booty. <laughs> I like the political stuff. I, I know it's in- Oh, Doctor Who getting political? Yeah, it always was, grow up. That's a lot of fun. Harriet Jones is hilarious before RTD was like, wait, no, fuck this bitch. Should've told him to run. Oh, haven't I mentioned? Eccleston's the best in every single one. Like even the weak one. We all know which one that is. Eccleston is the best. He is awesome and I love him, but Aliens of London One, Two, I'm gonna give that a B. It's not terrible, but I wouldn't call it the best, although I do like it a lot. Jackie Tyler, MILF. Uh, this one where I scribbled out World War Three after I decided to put the two parts together, mainly to save on post-it notes as well. Uh, that, that, that goes in the bin, because that's a mistake that I left in. Dalek! Dalek. Dalek. Come on. There are some episodes that you just know where they're gonna go. There is just a consensus that it is the best. So I'm not even gonna talk at length about that one. It's Dalek. It's S tier. Rob Shearman, come back. I love you. Have my children. The long game. It's not even that long. It's like average length. I'm putting that comfortably in B. Like it's, you know what? It's not bad. Everyone says it's like really, really bad. But that, that, that's not quite true. I mean, Adam Mitchell is a fucking moron, but he's supposed to be, I guess. Like, even in Dalek, he's he ditches Rose. <laughs> like, what an arsehole. <laughs> Simon Pegg is Simon Pegg. He's the best. And out of him and Nick Frost's uh, appearance in Doctor Who, it's the superior one. Sorry, Nick Frost, we'll get to you. It's a solid episode, but it's, like, mostly unmemorable. Father's Day! <laughs> Doctor Who, stop making me cry challenge. <laughs> you failed! Father's Day's Father's Day. It's spectacular. I really didn't expect the guy who plays Pete Tyler to get an emotional reaction out of me because he's all sort of laddie and dead. But no, it's spectacular. Father's Day is peak Who. Like, it uses the time travel element to create an emotional and unique story. You wouldn't get it anywhere else. The Empty Child and the Doctor Dances! I want to put it in S. 
very badly. So I will. Ha! Tricked ya. Stephen Moffat's first foray into New Who as well, and yeah, it's no wonder that he was the immediate choice as the showrunner for the when RTD eventually stepped down. It's amazing. It's The Empty Child. What more? Again, it, every single one of these, I don't need to talk about at length. <laughs> Everyone agrees that series one is one of the best series of the entire show. And come on. Boomtown! I like Boomtown. I think it's very interesting. Also, I like how RTD knew not to show the Slovene in its full form in this episode because he knows, as awesome as that design is, it's fucking ridiculous in a story like this. Like, imagine that massive bug-eyed thing in the TARDIS going, May I have a last request as you're going to fucking murder me? But it is funny though! <laughs> Die! The scene in the restaurant, everybody knows that's great. Like, the in the finger. <laughs> I think it's a solid episode. Honestly, a very- I'm putting in A. People might disagree, people might think it's a, 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 a B, or maybe even an F, but no, I think it's a solid A, it's a very solid episode. And finally, Bad Wolf and the Parting of the Ways. I never liked this episode, I'm kidding, of course I'm kidding. It is the best finale in the entire show, it's not been topped. I mean, th things have come close, don't get me wrong, but... Shut up. <laughs> so that's series one. No Fs. Two Bs. Three A's and five S tiers in one series. I'm gonna have to total up who got the most S's or whatever at the end, but spectacular. Also, I don't actually know where I'm gonna put each thing until I start talking, which is what makes this video fun. <laughs> series two, ah, tenant time. Ah. Let's start with the Christmas Invasion. I think it's a very good episode. I both like and don't like that Tenant is barely in it. I think it's a bold move that in any other Doctor's era would not have worked. Like if Smith was barely in the 11th hour. Weirdly works for this one. I think it's just because of how well we know and like uh, Mickey, Jackie and Rose. Well, Mickey then. I think the Christmas Invasion is a solid A. I think so. Also enjoy how each series has a different designated color now whilst you can. <laughs> I ran out of post notes. New Earth! It was a weird choice to bring back the bitchy trampoline. It feels like very early on they had their favourite characters and wanted to reuse them right away. I mean, I guess Cassandra is fun. I forget the actress, but she's... I'd say New Earth, cat person and all, face of Bo, introductory. I'll give it a B. For some reason, even though I do enjoy it, I don't think it deserves to be an A. I, oh, let alone, definitely not S. No offense. Also, I think this is really where it introduces the Doctor and Rose love thing. And nah, I'm not about that. Like, you could debate it started at Eccleston, but I don't see it. Tooth and Claw! That's another easy B. It's fine. It also has the worst tenant outfit. The weird, like, open shirt thing. No. Ugh. The werewolf is fine. The CG mostly holds up, but it's not a very interesting antagonist. Also, the monks... Uh, cringe. <laughs> People will probably disagree with me on that, but all the like the slow mo flipping and shit, I can't help but giggle. I do find it cool how this was the intro to Torchwood. That was a very clever setup for the finale. But I don't know. It's very unmemorable to me on the whole. You keep moving for God's sake! School reunion! That's an A! Not an S. Some people would probably give it an S, but the Sarah Jane and Rose dynamic never quite worked for me. I like what they were going for, like the sort of rebound angle. Because it, it, it is, I guess, on surface value, but there'd be more respect there, I feel. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm thinking of Sarah Jane, like, in her Sarah Jane Adventures run, as opposed to the sort of, like, defensive school reunion portrayal, but, eh. I mean, it works for Rose. Rose would totally be like, oh, excuse me, you fucked someone first. Like, that is Rose, especially in Series 2 Rose, to a T. But Sarah Jane, eh. Well, I guess you would still be very bitter at the Doctor, but anyway. Grillotane's fun. Mr. Finch is a dilf. Do try the chips. <laughs> I think someone should bring back the Skaces paradigm. That was always a very interesting, like, the god puzzle or whatever. It's an interesting concept. <coughs> I think it lives in A. Girl in the fireplace, how about that? Goes in S. The first S of series two. I think the girl in the fireplace holds up tremendously. People might disagree, mainly because of the feelings towards both uh, Noel Clarke and the woman who plays Renette and fair. But putting the outside world aside, death of the author and all that, does that apply? It's a solid story, told beautifully, written excellently, there's a horse, win. Moffat again at the top of his fucking game, like I wish he would come back in a... in this 
kind of way. But yes, Girl in the Fireplace. It's a beautiful love story that works tremendously well. Clockwork droids are terrifying. I love them. S tier. Disagree with me? In the comments. Engagement! Rise of the Cybermen and Age of Steel. That's an A! I like this two-parter! They brought the Cybermen back perfectly. John Lubick is such an asshole and is doesn't make any sense, but I love him. <laughs> Excellent. The Cybermen are fucking terrifying in this. Like, they are not scary after this until World Enough and Time. Maybe I'll disagree as I go along, but from memory, Jesus. I love all the side characters. Mrs. Moore, Jake. Mickey's twin? <laughs> sure. Actually, that's a point. Is there a, a Jake and a Mrs. Moore in our world? In, in, like, the Doctor's main world? Gotta wonder. Yeah, I don't think it's quite S. I think there's a few things that hold it back. I do like the world it creates, but it's like Zeppelins. There it is. Well, I guess that's more of a budget thing. And I like how it comes back uh, for the finale. It is a two-part setup. RTD, you legend. Idiot's Lantern! It's just forgettable, isn't it? I forget it's there every time. I turned the page, I looked at the poster note, and I said, what the fuck is that? I want to put it in B, because it's like, fine, it's inoffensive, it's whatever. It's not the worst. However, if it wasn't for that Gallifrey One comedy group called The Idiot's Lantern, that, that, that's the legacy. What is it? There's no point putting it in B, because that seems an insult to all the ones I've already put in B. So I, I think it goes to F. It's our first F. The worst thing you could be, other than outright bad, is nothing. And the Idiot's Lantern is nothing. Go on my way, doll. Why was that the picture used for, like, the centenary Doctor Who magazine cover? Like, I don't really care about that. But it's mainly the fact that the episode's crap. I get it, it's around the coronation, so sure. But, like... Who cares? The Impossible Planet and Satan Pit. I think it's honestly truly awful. Like people say it's good, but it, it's the worst. The beast is nothing. The Ood are so worse designed. Anyway, yeah, S tier. We are the Legion of the Beast. Or at least I am, personally. I'm a slut for the beast. <laughs> Love and Monsters. Is it weird that this episode in particular has got a resurgence? Like, people are looking back and kind of respecting how different it is, and I get that, I do. I do respect the risk that this episode was. Barely having the Doctor... Was, was it the first Doctor Light episode? I think it must be. I don't think it's an F. For the boldness of it alone, it's not an F, but it is still a B. If for no other reason, then... You, you upset my mum! If there was a spot between B and F, like a C minus, uh, that's where it would reside really, but for some reason I've limited myself to four. Fear her! F for fear her! Crowy weather! It's a cool concept, the idea that you can draw someone and they tr get trapped in the page. I think that's a very interesting concept that they could bring back and do a different take on it. Why does the doctor scoop marmalade and shove it in his mouth? What grot! And finally, for series two, Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. I flip flop on this a lot because a lot of it hinges on your thoughts uh, of the Doctor Rose. Eh, sorry, Ten Rose. <coughs> you can guess from that gag, not a fan. Even at the time, I was like, damn man. Because there is a lot of good stuff in there too. The Dalek Cyberman bitch fight legendary. Although, was it? The Daleks are so obviously overpowered compared to the Cybermen. Like, I want to see that, like, battle done right. Like, an entire episode about that. I think it's... Oh, I don't want to put it in B because people get mad at me. <laughs> I'm going to put it... I'm going to be bold. I'm going to put it halfway between B and A. You can argue that, but I won't listen. Series 3! Not quite at Martha yet, because first we've got to introduce the Queen, Donna! The Runaway Bride, A. Eh? I mean, Donna isn't quite the Donna we know and love yet, but she's still so fucking funny. <laughs> it's just a comedy. It's an all-out comedy, perfect for the Christmas period. They should have done more like that. Like, to my knowledge, The Runaway Bride is one of the only, like, pure comedy episodes that just wants laughs. I guess there's The Lodger, but I mean ones that make you laugh as opposed to make you go, FUCK OFF! The Runaway Bride's spectacular. An excellent comedy done well. I hope whatever the next Christmas special comes along, it is, like, a pure farce. Smith and Jones! That's one I haven't watched in a while. I, I know I like it, and I know that you do slab. I think it's an A. Is it? Yeah! 
the Doctor doesn't do too much like, oh, Rose, you know, like the stuff that makes Series 3 unbearably annoying. I think that's an A. I think that's an A. Martha is excellent. Everyone keeps saying she's going to reappear. I hope she does, but I hope we don't know until the episode. How cool would that be? Moving on, Shakespeare Code. F, fuck off. Gareth Roberts can eat my dick. And he'd like it. It's just kind of like, eh. Every time I've rewatched it, it gets worse. <laughs> like, how have we gone from fucking Unquiet Dead, where uh, Charles Dickens is like perfectly cast, perfectly acted, perfectly written and performed, to Shakespeare? Crap! It's crap! Let's go back to Shakespeare times and just make all of that not canon. <laughs> like, that's a thing we can do, because canon is an enigma. Good old JK, my arm. Gridlock! Is a B. I do like how dark it is at the beginning where Martha fully gets kidnapped. Bold start. And I do love the ending where the Doctor is reminiscing about Gallifrey, even though he does that more and more as time goes on, we all get fucking sick of it to the point where it's a cliche, but the first one slaps. The concept is fine, going back to New Earth and freeing the cars, and the face of Bo dies, setting up the excellent uh, reveal of the Master towards the end, the You Are Not Alone bit. Excellent. Young Jack had no idea what he was talking about. It's a, it's a solid B. It's fine. Brannigan is adorable and I want him as a pet. I'm not a furry. Or am I? Daleks in Manhattan and Evolution of the Daleks is good. I like the American aesthetic. Andrew Garfield's there. Thwip. I like how bold it is. You know, I've, I'm trying to talk myself into putting it in an A. I know everybody jokes about the hybrid Dalek design. Like, for example, I'm trying to be subtle here that he has six cocks on his face. And that is funny, but I think the design totally works. But, but why? You know what? A. A. Totally, totally A word. The Lazarus Experiment. F. Like, it's not bad, but it's the same issue as the Idiot's Lantern. It's just like, who gives a monkey? Like, are any of you offended? or genuinely upset that the Lazarus experiment is that low. I mean, Mark Gates is a very good actor in that, and in all of his other appearances, it's hilarious how often he appears. But it's just like, whatever, you know? Oh, it's too hot, the sticky notes are like coming off. This is a bad idea. 42, that's a B, whatever. It's fine, Chibnall, good for you. You peaked here, probably. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Human nature and the family of blood. Now we're talking S tier. I'm not even gonna mention the whole racism debate about uh, Joan, cause fuck that, I'm, I'm too white for that conversation. But outside of that, it's amazing. And I'm so glad that all, out of all of the um, Wilderness Years material that that was adapted, cause it is excellent. Paul Cornell, have my children. I know I said that about Rob Shearman earlier, but I want both of them. Two dads, three dads, yay, gay rights. What? Beautiful story, very original, well told, I love it. Tenon, uh, oh yeah, have I, <laughs> have I gotten to this point not mentioned Tenon? Tenon is fucking awesome. He is the best. There is a reason I am obsessed with him. And this episode is one of those that just prove how good he is. Blink, S tier. People say it's overrated. They're just mad. I don't know. <laughs> like there is a reason it has been lauded as one of, if not the best episodes of the entire show. It's so unique and brilliantly told. We are introduced to a character nearly knob first <laughs> when Sally walks in like, hello. And he goes, pants. She goes, mm -mm. and he goes, oh. And then later on, he gets embarrassed because he wasn't awake yet. That's relatable. We've all been there having our cocks out in front of Sally Sparrow. But yeah, blink. Fuck off. Weeping Angels peaked there, never got better. Utopia! Okay, people might disagree with me here. But I'm putting it in S. I love Utopia! It's one of like two off the top of my head that I'm gonna put in S, and people will argue about it the most with me. We'll get to series seven. But Utopia is excellent, and not just for the obvious reveal at the end, which makes it S on its own, to be fair, but the whole world building is awesome. Yeah, the future kind are a bit like, whatever the fuck, but clearly the budget ran out for them. But it's still excellent. Captain Jack comes back before we all fucking hate him. There is a bit of like, Rose would know, but then that's a series three problem as opposed to a Utopia problem. And just Derek Jacobi as a whole. I love The Professor. Even when I go back and rewatching it, knowing the twist, I'm like, Aw, I'm like, I was like, I like The Professor. The Professor killed himself. And it's like, no. The scene of Jack taking his clothes off, uh, going, not just the clothes off, <laughs> when Jack goes under the rocket, and that whole conversation, if memory serves, there's not much music under it as well, which makes it even cooler. I don't know. I love Utopia. Chantho is awesome. I love Chan Chantho. So? 
So, yeah. Sound of Drums and Last of the Time Lords. You guys really dropped the ball on this one, huh? RTD? More like HACK! John Sims Master does not speak to me. Really at all. I mean, well, he, I liked him in World Enough and Time and the Doctor Falls, but this and the End of Time, he doesn't do it for me. John Sims Master is like right at the bottom. Well, actually, no, there's that one. What is it, James Dreyfus? <laughs> He's at the bottom. <laughs> No! Oh, I see it's already starting! I mean, Martha, God bless you, Martha. I love you to pieces. You're one of the things that truly holds Series 3 together as a whole. The Toclophane reveal is obviously spectacular, but that's like, what, a minute out of a two-parter? <laughs> we all knew it was going to be a fucking cop-out at the very end as well, where they reverse time Superman style. I don't care if they had to do that. I get it but it still makes it shit. If it wasn't for a very f uh, select few things like Martha and the Top Levain reveal, it would be an S, honestly. Now Jack can have fun again. Cause it's time for series four! The best of tenants run. Why is it with most doctors that their last series is the best one? Bar Smith. Voyage of the Damned, so much fun. It's an action adventure that is excellent. It's an A though. I don't know what would bump it up to an S. I think the hosts are like, they're, they're fine. I like them. It's one of those episodes that really says that the Doctor is Jesus. I don't like the Space Jesus argument. Like, obviously the Doctor is this big messiah figure to some people, I guess. And that would be cool to have a whole episode where uh, there is like a whole planet of people who truly believe and pray to this man and he's like, no, 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 don't, don't do that. Yeah, things like this where it's like the host. <laughs> he's in the Jesus pose, lifting to the heavens. It's so stupid, but I guess the whole episode's kind of dumb. Kylie Minogue, surprisingly good. Who saw that one coming? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an A. It's a very good time. Great for the Christmas season. Not quite an S. Partners in Crime also an A. It is a comedy. It, that's what made The Runaway Bride so good. Donna is finally the best version of herself like already because she's so happy to see the Doctor but she's also still so sarcastic and back chatty to him. It's excellent. There is no wonder that out of the two people they could have brought back and revealed to us all for the 60th, it's these two. Like you can be you know, judgy about that. You could have your other favourites and want others to appear. I get it. I want Smith and Martha too. Come on, how? You can't be angry at this. It's them. Hey, it's an A. Miss Foster, you're a bitch, but I love you. Pfizer Pompeii. That's another A. Capaldi's first appearance. Love that guy. Hope he does well in the future. Yeah, it's not quite an S, but I wouldn't say it's a B. I love the volcano -y boys, whatever the fuck they're called. I forget their name. Pyroviles. There we go, I knew I had it tucked away in my memory banks, in my mind palace, I just had to fucking find it. I love the family, the core family, there's not a weak element. You know how there's usually like, in a group ensemble thing, there's like one or two that you're like, I, whenever it cuts back to you, like stop it. But no, I love the whole family, they're great. Oh yeah, Karen Gillan's in it. Even when I go back and rewatch it, I can't see her as Karen Gillan, like, I know it's her, but I, I can't see it. It's like when I go watch Guardians of the Galaxy, I can't see her in Nebula, it's weird. Planet of the Ood. Hmm. It's fine. It's alright. It's good. I like the bit at the end where he gets turned into a nude. That's fucking disgusting and I love it. It's- you know what? It's between. It's just like, uh, the, uh, fucking doomsday for me. It's like- I like it. I know I do. But not quite enough to respect it. Some tar and stratagem and poison sky. I like unit. I wish unit appeared more. Even though they fucking- they, they, are you telling me they couldn't have had the Brigadier? I, I know, he's old as fuck at this point, I get it. But if they could get him for the Sarah Jane adventures, you couldn't get him over Skype. Stranded in Peru, your fucking unit. Get him on the phone. Anyway, uh, I love the new Sontaran designs. Mainly the head, the armor's a bit like action figure, but they fixed that in War of the Sontarans. We'll get there, hopefully. I might have died of fucking heat stroke by that point. Love Martha, she's better than she is in the entirety of series three, or at the very least she's treated better. Can you imagine if the first time the Doctor steps out of the TARDIS after calling her, they see each other in that alleyway, they have a big hug and the Doctor goes, oh Rose, I've met, fuck Martha! And Martha just fucking punches him. The Doctor's daughter. Now how much do I want to start a fight here? A lot. This is one that people flip-flop on a lot, but I, I really like it. I wish Jenny came back. People may disagree with me here, but I think it would be fascinating and also really creepy considering what's happened outside of the show. <laughs> I think it's an excellent episode. No notes. 
I, the people say that Donna should have gone with the half and Martha should have stayed with the Doctor. Yeah, that's probably true. I think that that, that would be would elevate it even more. Even without that, I think it's an excellent episode. The ending where the Doctor nearly fucking shoots Corn on the Cob is awesome. I never would. I want to see a Dark Days, Rassilon Productions Dark Days, or like a big finish what if kind of thing where he fucking shoots him. And I want to see what happens after that. I want to see Donna and Martha's reaction to the Doctor going up to Colonel Corn on the Cob. <laughs> Unicorn on the Wasp, that's a B. I've got nothing to say about Unicorn and the Wasp. It's like, whatever. It's your standard murder mystery with Agatha Christie. It's like a paint by numbers Doctor Who. There's nothing special about it. It's a man who's a wasp. I can't even take it that seriously, because whenever he does the transform, he is a reverend, a very nice, smart, they just man, very polite, going Are you telling me that that's scary to you? Are you fucking alright? Like no, I, <laughs> if you're gonna present to me a man dressed as a priest in like 1920s England going like this I'm going to laugh in your face. Silence in the library and forest of the dead baby! It's so good! River Song peaks here too. Like, I like River in her later appearances. I don't actually cringe that hard or whenever she's really horny. Cause, same. It's, again, it's one of those episodes where I don't even have to talk about it. You know why it's an S tier. The Vashta Narada is so good. How have they not come back? But at the same time, I almost don't want them to come back because it'll be like the Weeping Angels where it's like they get worse every time. So keep this special, actually. I changed my mind. Also, that's another one where the group of, of people, like the ongoing cast, are like, there's no weak links. I like them all. They're great. Midnight! Oh, Back to back, baby! I really need to do something with that uh, stage play comedy script I've got. I'm so sorry to the people who I promised that about, like the people I cast. You were all amazing. It's my fault. Yeah, Midnight. I'm, I'm not even gonna fucking talk about Midnight, because it's it's peak. It's amazing. Turn left, on the other hand. F tier. Just kidding. That's another S, baby! Shit, I've broken it. It's such a cool what if. It's so dark. How did Russell get away with it? <laughs> I fuck turn left. So good. So good. Stolen Earth Journey's end. It's like, whatever. I think it's between A and B. It, it's, it's on the same level as Doomsday. Actually, is it? Oh, no. The stickiness is weird off. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put it in A, because I, I do find it better than Doomsday. I love the Daleks. I love Daddy Davros. Dave, call me. Probably my favourite Davros, aside from Genesis. Actually, maybe even including Genesis. Fight me on that. The Red Supreme Dalek. Fuck yeah. I don't think the ensemble works. I mean, obviously, I like them all, because they're all great, but... They don't mesh very well, there's not a lot of crossover appeal, they're just sort of in a room. You could have done more with that if it was a three-parter, but then again, considering we had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back S's, would you have time for that? Maybe get rid of the Unicorn and the Wasp or Planet of the Ud and just make it a three-part finale, you know? But yeah, that's series four, a lot very strong. Not quite series one strong, but strong. Before we get to series five, however, we need to wrap up the Tenant era, of course, with the specials. The next Doctor is an A. I love the concept. I remember Little Jack was so fucking confused. David Morrissey plays an excellent What If Doctor. Love him. Rosita. Why do you have to call him fucking Rosita? Like, get over Rose for fuck's sake. It's the one thing that weighs down the entire Tenant era, and I swear to God, if they mention Rose in the 60th specials, even in, even if offhandedly, fuck off. <laughs> I'm sick of this woman. The audacity of this bitch. But it's a fun episode, it's a lot of fun, but also kind of dark. It's very, uh, Temple of Doom towards the end, you know, with all the kids working in the factory. Can you imagine just fucking the Cyberman rips out a guy's heart? Actually, that would be Cool. Not quite an S, but I think it's really, really good. Planet of the Dead, it's like, whatever. It's going an F. Christina D'Souza is fine. How the fuck, how did she get a big finish spin? Can I get a big finish spin off? If I trundle around in the desert in a bus, does that mean I get a fucking box set? I mean, the flying bus concept's really fun. I guess that's nice. But that, that would fit in series five, actually. It's very fairy tale. Oh, hang on, where's... where's... Oh, I nearly misplaced another S tier. It was stuck to Planet of the Dead. Planet of the Dead weighing down waters of bloody Mars. It's so good. Probably the best out of all the Tenant era. Gadget, gadget, bitch. End of time part one and two. Fuck me. 
Oh, end of time. My mixed reactions to you. I'm putting you in B. Some people put it in S. Some people put it in F. I'm done with it. <laughs> I really like uh, what's his face Timothy Dalton as uh, uh, Rassilon Bond boy. That's fun. I like that. Very well cast. John Sims Master again. I spoke about him earlier. It's not not for me. Tennant's performance throughout the whole thing is spectacular. Wilf is probably what puts it above an F. Just Wilf. Love Wilf. Although realistically, again, it's between these two. <laughs> Actually, should I do that? I can do that, can't I? Yeah. Yeah. People are going to fight me on that. <laughs> That's between. <coughs> now we can move on to Smith. Yes, here we go, Matthew Smith. I've got some fun things to say about Matthew Smith. 11th hour, S tier. It's up there with Rose as just one of the best openers ever. I love the 11th hour. Sets up series five perfectly, introduces us to the new Doctor and Amy perfectly, even though Rory is there. Like, we all, we all love Rory towards the end. Most of us more than Amy by the end of it, but Rory's like fucking nothing in the 11th hour, and it's kind of funny. Prisoner Zero is really cool as well, the shape-shifting aspect. They did waste Olivia Coleman, but again, I have so much to say, and I so much I don't love, you know. Yeah, S. Beast Below, A. I like Beast Below. I used to fucking despise it, as did Moffat's children, but I like it. There's a lot there to like. I love the world. Uh, you know, what if Brexit happened in the future where <laughs> it kind of is we get the entirety of england's like fuck you we want our own ship the smilers are creepy as shit i want to go back to starship uk just to see the smilers again liz 10 i could take a leave her she she's cool the moral dilemma is beautifully handled as well it's bold to put it this close to the beginning of the series considering how much of an asshole smith is like uh, nobody human will ever talk to me today you know that thing like that's surely more of a mid-series or towards the end action. Maybe people are disagree, but I don't know. I always thought that was weird. Victory of the Daleks. I've had a soft spot for this one, <laughs> but it is a B. It's not an F, like some people would say. I I honestly really like it. I love the paradigm. I will scream my love for them to uh, whatever god exists up there, Ganesh or Muhammad or whoever. Uh, but I love them. I love the Victory of the Daleks paradigm Daleks. Daleks in World War Two should have been an S, really. But, Mark Gates, you really dropped the ball. Time of Angels and Flesh and Stone, easy A. Not as good as Blink, but a lot of fun putting the angels in this more sort of action-oriented uh, kind of story. They're still quite scary at this point. Love the scene where they're only lit by the fucking muzzle flashes of the guns. That's sick. <laughs> Vampires of Venice is an S tier. <laughs> That's not a joke, it's an S tier. I love Vampires of Venice. It's such a good story, man. Rory is starting to be less of a cuck. Not quite like a not cuck. He, he still is, but less. Amy is just on the cusp of being unbearable. <laughs> like she's getting there, but not quite. Smith's performance is excellent as it is throughout the entire run of his show. Although he does kind of peak in series five. I think it gets more cartoonish as time goes on. Rosanna Calvieri, her actress, was excellent for her role. Her son, <laughs> I don't like the son, but it's kind of the point. He's supposed to be this bratty child. Like when they're sat on the floor and she's stroking his head and he's got that fucking glum face on, gets up and he's like, fuck off, mum. I want to just fuck my siblings or whatever he says. I don't know his catchphrase. Beep. I was, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm putting that in S. You can argue that, but I don't care. S tier. Amy's choice. Another S. Back to back, baby. The Dream Lord is so good. You could bring him back. Okay, look, I said this about Vashti Narada, and it, it still stands that if you bring him back, it probably won't be as good, much like with the Weeping Angels. But there's still potential, and I love Toby Jones. Dobby is a sock. But I, I love Amy's choice. I love it a lot. It's an excellent story, an excellent last minute twist. Love that. And yeah, the Dream Lord holds it together, man. Dream Lord really holds it together. Rory's ponytail can fuck off. Also, I remember when that first aired and I started watching it and like suddenly Amy's pregnant and I was so confused because I was a child and an idiot and I still am. But I remember watching it like, oh, did, did, oh no, did I miss an episode? I was genuinely so scared that I had missed an episode. <laughs> Hungry Earth and Cold Blood is an A, I think. I like it a lot. New Slurian design, top notch, love that. Very saucy. A layer. I like how the Doctor makes a, ge a genuinely awful mistake that you kind of get. Like, the fact that he 
is fine sending off the kid to get his pissing headphones. And he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's working. He's focusing on keeping them all alive. So he doesn't even think. I think it's a very believable error to make. And he owns up to it immediately. There's no liar reveal. Like, everyone's like, well, where did we, where's Elliot? We need to find him. And the doctor's like, oh, I was last to saw him. He went to get headphones. And he immediately jumps into action. That shit's great. I love a fallible doctor. Fantastic. That mother as well. I, I used to despise her, and I still do. But I get her motivation more now. She's still in the wrong, and I still fucking hate her whenever she does the drill bit, and fucking just But you get it. You get it. Vincent and the Doctor, S tier. It speaks for itself. It stands out as just, it's art. I know it's ironic, because it's Vincent van Gogh, and he's an artist, Mwah, Italian kiss thing. It's a one of a kind episode, it really is. The Lodger, fuck off. I liked it as a kid as well, that's the worst part. Oh no, where did Sound of Drums fall off? Oh no, where was Sound of Drums? Oh there, good, okay. I just had to find the, uh, the gap. And finally, Pandorica opens in Big Bang. S tier. It's an excellent series finale. Not quite, not, qu not quite as good as Passing of the Ways, but still excellent in its own right. 11th hour disagreed, so it fell on the floor. I love the Alliance, honestly. I wanted more of the Alliance. I li I, I would have loved it if they made one of those prequels. Cause the, you know, they got obsessed with it in Series 7. The Infrarium and the way weird one where River and Eleven are like under an umbrella. You know, I'd love that, but with the Daleks and Cybermen talking over a fit. Like, like in Doomsday, just that. But with like the Sontarans as well. Someone make that, please. I want to see the Skype call of the Alliance forming. Because they would never do that in person. They'd shoot each other. Also, I love how the Big Bang is so just out there and bombastic and fairy tale. It's peak Moffat. All downhill from here. No. Well, a bit. Christmas Carol. People like this one. Why? It's a B at best. I like um, Dumbledore as as uh, Kazran Sardik. What? Could, did they not just call him Scrooge? It's already so on the nose. <laughs> I like Amy wearing the police outfit. Kink achieved. I don't like Smith's new jacket. Oh, never liked the new jacket. Series 5 jacket's superior. Why change it? I get it for the American one. It's sort of more American suede or whatever. But well, he kept it. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Also, his hair's a downgrade sort of. I don't know. I don't know. I'm fickle. It's fine, I guess. Sure. Why not? But it's a Christmas carol. Like, piss off. Although that song at the end. When you're alone. That one. It, very good. Slaps. Impossible Astronaut and Day of the Moon. Mm. That's another one I'm sort of lukewarm on. You know what? It, yeah, the more I'm thinking it's an A. If the silence lived up to the hype, it would be an S. Mate, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Richard Nixon's way too nice in that, by the way. It's fine. I, oh, I love the silence, but I, I wish I loved them more. I could have loved them more. Let me love you. <laughs> Curse of the Black Spot. I mean, it's fine. No, it's an F. It's again. It's a Planet of the Dead, Idiot's Lantern situation. I like having it like this. <laughs> the Doctor's Wife. You know, I rewatched this a couple weeks ago. I still like it a lot. It's excellent. But is it an S? Oh God, it'll start a fight if I don't put it in S. But it's, you know what it is? And you're gonna disagree with me and that's fine. It's Idris, the character and how she's performed. Saran Jones is an excellent actress and she plays it the way it's written and it's Neil Gaiman and who doesn't love Neil Gaiman, Jesus. But if you put the TARDIS in a human form, she is going to be botly, but does she have to be horny as well? You know what I mean? Like that takes it out for me and that's an overarching Moffat issue, but I'm going to pin in A. It, I would not call The Doctor's Wife S tier. Maybe when I first watched it because it blew my fucking mind, but yeah, whatevs. Rebel Flesh and Almost People. Just, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> I don't like that one. I like that it sets up the, the, the next one. That's fun. But it, I don't care about the moral dilemma. It, it bores me to tears. I like the fact that there's two doctors. You can't go wrong with just multiplying what works. <laughs> two Smiths is fun. But it, when I go, when I think to watch it back, I just watch the scenes of the two doctors on, on YouTube. So yeah. That, that, that's that's how you watch it. A good man goes to war. I like a good man goes to war, but mainly for Venus Flint episode one. Not an S, but an A. Serviceable. 
I like Vastra, I like Strax and I like Jenny. They all do basically peak here and get worse and more cartoonish as time goes on. I get why they had a spin-off though, as opposed to Christina pissing to Sousa. Let's kill Hitler! Let's not! Realistically, it's between B and F. Actually, you know what? It's overhated, really. But at the same time, is it? Night Terrors! Oh yeah, Night Terrors. It's another one of those episodes you truly forget exist. And it's a B. Because it's not bad. Girl Who Waited! Now that's an S. The first and possibly only S of Series 6. I don't like Series 6. I like The Girl Who Waited. It's no wonder that this was sort of the awards darling. I do believe Karen Gillan got an, Os an Oscar. <laughs> I do believe she got a BAFTA. <laughs> Quite right too. Great performances all round, both from Arthur, Smith and Pond. I like the concept. Concept's fun. The ending is so emotional. God damn it. God complex. People might disagree. That's also an S. Back to back S's in series six. Got a gear. Got a gear. <laughs> Performed excellently and it just looks spectacular. I love the cast of characters we have, except for David Walliams. Like, I get the point of his character and for what it was, it's performed excellently, but I still fucking despise it. The Trevally are pushover pricks. It's no wonder you've survived all these years. Also, out of all of the companions that never were, there were a lot of them. Uh, the nurse in this episode, I forget her name, she was one of the best. I truly wanted her to stick around for at least an episode because I loved it a bit. But she fucking died. God damn it. That one hurt. That one hurt a lot. Closing time. F, go away. Closing time in the lodger get worse the more we learn about James Corden anyway. But even at the time, I was like, of all the people to come back to, James Corden? Really? I feel like it was Smith's idea. Because Smith seemed to get along very well with Corden, and I'm sure they like each other a lot. And that's fine. But I don't. The Wedding of River Song! Is a bee! <laughs> it's like, whatever. The silence, really, that's it. You get caught in a fish tank until the doctor just sort of turns up one day. Doesn't make sense. Series 7! The Doctor, the Wither, and the Wardrobe. Go away! Asylum of the Daleks! Should have been so much better! Dinosaurs on a spaceship! It's like, fine. It's a B. Maybe, it's, it's between. It's it's genuinely, it's it's between. Town Called Mercy! That's an A. I like a Town Called Mercy, that's good shit. Yeehaw, etc. Power of Three. No, that's an F, because the ending sucked. Uh, it's between B and F, because the rest of the episode's good, but the ending is genuinely so bad, and doesn't make any sense that it ruins the whole thing. Angels take Manhattan! That's an S. Is it? Is it? You know what? It's between. I like it a lot, but also, do I? I'm powering through these because I'm so hot, and I honestly don't have much to say about them. The Snowmen! That's an S. Victorian Clara should have been the one to stick around. I get the whole point was like, there's lots of different Claras throughout time and space, but like, I don't care. <laughs> like, give me a good companion as opposed to a mystery, wrapped in an enigma, wrapped in a skirt that's just a little too tight so I can see her camel toe. Like, no, I don't care. Bells of St. John. It's like a B, I guess. Damn, the drums fell off again. I guess the drumming was too hard. Ha <laughs> ha! Rings of Akaten. Do you remember earlier when I was talking about, I think it was Utopia, that people would get really confused why I put it in S? Or was it Utopia? Or, I don't know. Uh, this, this is what I'm talking about. Rings of Akaten, that's going in S. Because you have to think, if you removed the speech, the famous speech, much like with Pandorica Opens, if you remove it, is the episode good on its own terms? I'd say yes. It's very unique. I like the exploration of this place. I love the exploration of Akaten with Clara, and I love the name drop of Susan as well. It's just a very entertaining and endearing and wonderfully engaging bit of media, even if nothing much is happening. But then you add the speech on top! Oh! If you dare say the Rings of Akaten speech is overrated, I'll punch you in the, in, the, in the penis. Even if you don't have a penis, I'll punch you where the penis is supposed to be. Cold War! B, uh, it's It's like your standard who, I guess. It's alright. Hide! F! What is that? What's a hide? Disgusting. It's a love story. I don't care. Leave me alone. Speaking of leave me alone, journey to the centre of the TARDIS. <laughs> this should have been so much better. I am livid that this is as bad as it is. You know what? I'm so mad, it's gonna go at the bottom. I 
people will probably argue with me about that, but I hate this episode because it promised so much to see finally like a tour, an all episode inside the TARDIS that's so much worse than The Doctor's Wife, wherever that's gone. Like, The Doctor's Wife was a better episode than The Journey of the Center of the Tardis, and we don't even see much except for corridors! Like, you couldn't have at least showed us a classic TARDIS console, you know? What do we get? We get a railing, a bit of a library, a glimpse of a pool, and that's it. Piss off. Also, the supporting cast in that is so boring, and they're assholes. They played a prank on their little brother, thinking he's a robot, but he's not. It's just a fucking voice changer or whatever. And they they think that's fine? Really? It took until now for them to rethink their whole plan? Awful people. Terrible. Die. Also, the ending's a bit of a cop out. Let's be real. It's a big friendly button. I like that prop as much as the next man, but terrible. No, I hate that episode. Crimson Horror. People don't like this one. And I get it. It's between an A and a B, because I, I still find it very entertaining. It's always a pleasure to see the Paternoster gang, even if the Doctor should not have kissed Jenny. Like, Jesus Christ, what was that? <laughs> Nightmare and Silver. It's another one that promised so much, but didn't really deliver. It's between A and, uh, it's between B and F for me. I, I really don't like it. Wasn't that another Neil Gaiman one? If so, Neil, you all right? Name of the Doctor. I like this one a lot. That is, It's between S and A, because really it does scream of a part one, <laughs> even though the part two doesn't really exist. Speaking of, Day of the Doctor! Fuck! Uh, no, it's an S. Who am I kidding? I like this one a lot. There's a lot it should have been. It, it should have been better. It should have been a more of a celebration of the whole 50 years as opposed to just the revival. But at the same time, I love it a lot. Go fuck yourself. Time of the Doctor! That's an A, I guess. Yeah, it's fine. People hate this one, and I get it. It's kind of the uh, the black sheep where where people start to sort of see through Moffat's bullshit. But you know, I still like it a lot, so eat it. On to a new Doctor though, with Peter Capaldi. Starting with Deep Breath. It's fine. Like it's such a like weak opener. It's a B. I don't know the consensus with Deep Breath actually. Many people love it, but I don't. It's got a lot of good stuff in it, but not enough to consider it an A. <laughs> Into the Dalek. Actually, before we get to that, you know my main issue with Deep Breath? We don't get an idea of what Capaldi's Doctor will be like, because I don't think Moffat knew, or Capaldi. I, I, I mean, to be fair, I still don't fully understand what Capaldi's Doctor's meant to be, because he's kind of a lot. I love Capaldi in it, don't get me wrong, his performance is great. Into the Dalek! It's a, probably a B and an F. This one should have been better. It should have been a lot better. There was a lot of chance for an interesting story or even just fan service, but we don't really get either. Robots of Sherwood. Between a A and a B, I'd say. It's entertaining. I like a Mark Gatiss script as much as the next guy. Listen! You know, for some people it's an S. It's not for me, it's a B. It's serviceable at best. I don't have much to say about it. Time Heist. I like Time Heist, that's an A. It's a very good slice of who. Uh, although, actually, no, I'm marking down points for uh, Capaldi's line of, how's that for the date? Fuck off. The Caretaker. It's another B, A and a B, I guess. Like, it's all right. Kill the Moon. Piss off. You're going with Journey to the Center of the TARDIS as being some of the worst Doctor Who uh, we have ever seen. Mummy on the Orient Express. Some people might put this as an S. Not Jack. Flatline. Mm. That's between an A and a B. People rank that quite high, but I, I don't quite see it. And this is where I ran out of post-it notes. <laughs> but luckily I don't need a post-it note for In the Forest of the Night. Actually, no, it's not that bad, but it is still going in it. I like the fairy tale nature of it. If it was a Smith Series 5 episode, I'd probably rank it higher, but it just doesn't suit Capaldi, at least the era that it was in. And then finally, the finale. That's an F. Dark Water and Death in Heaven does nothing for me. Missy isn't interesting yet, so sod that. It's one of those episodes that also just has the Cybermen as second fiddle. Why? I, I'm, although at the same time good, because that's back when the designs were crap and bad. Last Christmas! F! Paldi and Christmas seem just to mix very poorly. Exci aside from once, but we'll get to that. Was Santa real? Why was Clara old? I need to rewatch that, really. But I just don't remember liking it. I like how they dealt with uh, the aftermath of Danny's death, like with him popping up in the flashbacks, or the, the, the dream stuff. That's kind of fun. Uh, you know, it's a nice, dark kind of idea. 
but I still don't like it. Speaking of not liking things, Magician's Apprentice and the Witch's Familiar, that's an F God. Do I despise this era of the show? <laughs> Under the Lake and Before the Flood is fine. People really like this one and I don't quite get the hype. It's a nice idea, but the crew, like the cast of characters are so forgettable for me. There's the deaf one and that's all I can remember off the top of my head and that's cool, I like that. I like how she's using the sign language and stuff. That's cool and inclusive, big fan of that. But it's nothing higher than a B. Maybe on a rewatch it's an A, but I haven't rewatched it yet. <laughs> the girl who died slash the woman who lived. It's between a B and an F, cause it's like, it could have been so much better, but it wasn't. I'm not a fan of that one personally. Or a Shilda as an idea. Actually no, I like the idea of having a new immortal in the universe uh, when Captain Jack is busy getting his cock out. But I mean, there's a reason she's not come back. And it's not just because it's played by Maisie Williams. Zygon Invasion slash Inversion. Again, putting aside the speech, I still think it's an A. I mean, the, uh, the speech is an S, but I think it's a solid two-parter with some solid ideas. Fumbles a bit with trying to make the Zygons Isis. Like, isn't the idea that the Zygons are... Like, they're not the bad guys, necessarily. They just want to share the planet. Isis doesn't want to share. <laughs> I get, I, I know, sorry, I know they're extremist Zygons, but at the same time, you're not endearing us to them and their cause, are you? Sleep no more. What a nothing story this was. Wasn't this another Gatiss one? I like the ending where it's quite dark and like, there's something in your eye, but like, no, there's nothing to this one. The enemy is sleep dust. Face the Raven and Heaven Sent. Those two, that's a two-parter, and that's an F. Need I say more? I, oh, I do? Okay. Well, Heaven Sent, I don't need to say anything more about, but Face the Raven is an excellent first part to this. People would probably consider it more, uh, Face the Raven is a utopia of the Sound of Drums and Last of the Time Lords, but I don't want to do that to Heaven Sent. This is my ranking, so shut up. It's technically a three-parter in the same vein as uh, one that will come later on, the Extremis one, but I want to praise Heaven Sent and put it in S. I don't want to have to weigh it down with Hellbent. Speaking of, I, you know what? I really like Face the Raven as well. That's a really fun first part, and whenever I watch Heaven Sent, I always always watch Face the Raven first, because uh, Riggsy shouldn't have been as entertaining and endearing as he was. Hell Ben can go fuck itself. <laughs> it's not quite as bad as Journey or Kill the Moon, so it is just going to go in normal F. But for killing my enthusiasm for what was a, f uh, a good turning point in, he in Heaven Sent, I have not forgiven Moffat for and never will. People will argue Heaven Hell Hell Ben is good. Uh, and a good continuation. I disagree. Go fuck yourself. I get heated. It's just opinions, but I get heated because I'm a Doctor Who fan. <laughs> Husbands of River Song. S. Love this one. Love the Husbands of River Song. I sound sarcastic. I actually really do. <laughs> I don't know what it is about this one. It's a perfect cap to River Song's story. I, I wouldn't mind it if she came back, but that's, you know, you don't need to now. You've, you've ended it well. It's a very entertaining story as well. It's quite, it's kind of a comedy. That's why I like it as well. It's Runaway Bride, uh, the next level. I guess just do uh, husbands and wives and you win. Also Capaldi with River, it, it shouldn't work. I feel like it shouldn't work, but I like it a lot. And now onto the final Capaldi series, starting with Return of Doctor Mysterio. I remember despising this one when it came out, but you know what? It's actually okay. Not perfect, but it's got some excellent performances, some great homages to classic superhero stuff. I think it's an A. Goodbye, Mr. A. The pilot. Introduction to Bill. I was never sold on Bill until Thin Ice. So the pilot is an interesting one. I think it's fine. I think it's a solid A to B. Not quite an A, not quite a B. Smile. It's really good until the humans arrive, which really is kind of a thing for history. So I think it's a B. Also, again, I wasn't quite endeared to Bill yet. I am now, I love Bill. Bill's great. Bill's better than Clara. Should have turned up uh, for series eight, nine as well. Sorry, Clara stands, but you're wrong. Bill's better. Thin Ice, however, is an S. I love Thin Ice. It was the turning point for getting me to, uh, enthused with the show again after such a weak time with series eight to nine, or really seven, kind of. Oh, I've run out of space. 
I didn't think there'd be this many S's. <laughs> yeah, I love Thin Ice, love it to pieces, great world. I love the uh, reference to River, because obviously, you know, they mentioned it in uh, Good Man Goes to War, that they had been there before. I love the breakdown that Bill has, it's very believable. Knock knock, it's a nothing, I'm putting in F, go fuck yourself. I love David Suchet, I love Poirot, but it's a nothing story. I despise the supporting cast. It kind of reminds me of the people from Class. I haven't watched Class, but the vibe I got was them, and I, I didn't like it. And I don't remember anything from Knock Knock, nothing worth my time, except actually the one thing I've remembered from it after all this time is the weird like triangle thing they put the TARDIS on, so it was flat with the curb. That makes me giggle. Oxygen, now there's another S. Love Oxygen has a lot to say. Uh, Nardole is better than he has any right to be. I wasn't sold on Nardole for a while, but honestly, he is really good. Again, Bill is excellent. I love the sacrifice that the Doctor makes uh, by going blind for a few episodes. That's very unique. I like that a lot. Would have been cool if he stayed blind until he regenerated. How fucking sick would that be? Ah, the only one where I've actually had all three parts. Extremis, Pyramid at the End of the World, and Lie of the Land is whatever. It's a B. <laughs> Like, who gives a fuck about that? The monks should have been cooler. Honestly, the monks should have been the silence, in hindsight. It's kind of the same deal. They'd probably still be bitter about the whole Transalor debacle. They're like, I saved your life! Oh no, little tally. Empress of Mars! B to F. Because I don't remember a single thing about that episode, except that I didn't really like it that much. I'm being very kind to series 10. <laughs> Eaters of Light! Oh, never mind, it's going an F. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Go fuck yourself, that's going down to kill the moon and journey to the centre of the TARDIS in its own dumpster fire hell. Because what even was Eaters of Light? Wasn't it the same person that wrote Survival? One of the best classic serials of them all? Are you okay? World Enough of Time and the Doctor Falls, however, it's an S. A great ending to Capaldi's run. The final thing we ever get to see from Capaldi's run. I can't believe it uh, that they ended on, on such a high is what I want to say so badly. God fucking damn it. <laughs> you are going all the way to the bottom with Eaters of Light, Kill the Moon, and to the center of the TARDIS. It had so much potential. I want to die. And now we're on to Jodie Whittaker. I was never a big fan of Jodie's run, but maybe I'll surprise myself. The Woman Who Fell to Earth. A very apt title, because that is actually, uh, and this is true, what happens. You see, there's a woman who falls from, uh, who fell to Earth. <laughs> what am I talking about? It's all right. It's your standard thing. It's, it, would, it might be an F if it wasn't for salad. Fuck you. <laughs> also, they, it was a bold move to kill Ryan's mum. I think, or was it mum or nan? Fuck, who was she? Oh yeah, the new companions. Uh, never liked Ryan. Found him very annoying. No offence. Full offence. Graham is Bradley Walsh. He's charming. There's a reason he's a host. And Yaz was never interesting until Flux. Ghost Monument! It's like a B and an A, it's sort of there, I'd say. It's fine. The exposition towards the beginning where Yas is talking about her family is so fucking forced. That's, a, that's like one of the few things I remember from that one. But I, it is gorgeous. And the final like uh, finding of the TARDIS is really, really cool. Rosa is an A. Would be an S. Genuinely would be an S if it wasn't for the villain. <laughs> and the pop song that plays at the end. Because I was like, you know, I wasn't enthused about Whitaker's run. This comes on and it's a really genuine and raw depiction of that time period. And the acting is superb. The woman who plays Rosa Parks is spectacular. I didn't really care for the villain, but I could look past it. I get it. It's just racism as a human. Fine. Although someone did mention that it should have been Captain Jack, like, pre... Uh, mind wipe, that would have been lit. Then we get to the end, Graham is fucking crying and I'm really invested and then they play that fucking song. And it's not like Vincent and the Doctor where it, ad it adds to it, it, it infuriates me. <laughs> I don't know, but it's a very good episode nonetheless. The first banger of the 13th Doctor's era. Then Arachnids in the UK comes along and says, hey remember when you weren't really that enthused? How about that? Even worse, it's an F. The Arachnids that are in the UK, actually my flat is infested with ants at the minute because of the heat. Uh, anyone else got that problem? Leave, leave, uh, let me know in the comments below. The Tussaranga... What? The T... I know it's a meme to mispronounce this in the finale, but I genuinely... Do. The Tussaranga conundrum. The fuck off conundrum. F. Isn't that the episode where the guy gives birth and calls the baby avocado? That's the one thing I remember from that episode. It's hilarious, but stupid. Oh no, that's the one with the Pating, isn't it? Pating's cute. 
I think it's just Stitch though. Demons of the Punjab! Yes! Love that one. In fact, dare I say, it's the first S of the Whittaker era. Handles the history very well, uh, excellent performances across the board. I like how it takes a, what, what should be a well-known histor historical uh, time, or moment rather, and gives it a full episode, because that's what it should be. You know, Doctor Who should have more episodes that like, like that, that sort of teaches history. And that does suit Chibnall's writing style of being over uh, expository. What am I trying to say? Chibnall likes his exposition, you know, it's very in your face. And an educational episode does suit that very well. It's no wonder that his historicals are what he's known for, or what he's remembered for. Kablam! One of the few uh, Doctor Who episodes with punctuation. And I do believe the only Doctor Who episode with an exclamation point. I had to double check the wiki on that. Isn't it pro Amazon? Am I remembering that right? That doesn't seem right, but I think it is. <sighs> I do like the Kablam Man. I do like the world, and I do like Lee Mack. It's between a B and an F. Realistically, it's an F, but luckily I can't remember off the top of my head if uh, I'm remembering the pro Amazon right. If it is pro Amazon, consider it an F. Go fuck yourself. The Witch Finders. I liked the Witch Finders, actually. I loved Alan Cummings. Damn, is that all I remember? Okay, I might just be nice about it because of Alan Cummings. God damn it. What, what, what happened in that one? 13 Apple Bobbed? I'll put it between A and B because I genuinely don't remember what happened in that one. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just being kind to it because I like Alan Cummings. <laughs> it takes you away, does it? Where does it take you? Where does it go? Where does it take you? People really seem to like that one. Why? It's an F. Actually, no, that's, it's a B. That's, that's too cruel. But I, it's like, it's a nothing story. I watched it, I forgot all about it, and moved on with my life. Battle of Avscore. No, that's not right. Oh, God damn it. I know it's, a, it's, an, it's such an overused joke. Battle of Ranscore Avcolos. F. No, in fact, it's with twice one time at the bottom. That is the worst finale of all the finales. <laughs> it's it's such a nothing story. And for a finale, that's ridiculous. <laughs> resolution! Like Resolution. Like it a lot. No, it's an S. Resolution is definitely an S. One of the strongest Dalek stories there is. Not quite Dalek level da uh, thing, but you know what? It's excellent nonetheless. I've genuinely done it. Shit. Series 12! This has taken me so long, you have no idea how much I've cut out. Spyfall parts 1 and 2. If it was just one, it would be an A. I think it's a bit too big for its boots. I like it. I like the Bondness of it, but I think it's a B at best. Uh, Sasha Dewan's Master, not quite as weak as Sim. I liked him when he was first, like, doing his thing, but the more he went on, the more ridiculous he was, and the more, like, boring he was. Although he did uh, get better, I did like him in Power of the Doctor, so like, fuck me, am I right? Orphan 55. Benny! It was on Earth the whole time! Whoa! Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. I like this one a lot. Not quite an S, uh, although the guy who plays uh, Tesla is really good and really got me invested in the world. I'd give it a solid A, I'd say. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna be nice. It's between an S and an A. There you go. Oh, we can't. Oh, shit. Uh, I thought this would be a really cool idea, but it's... it's... God damn it. Fugitive of the Jadoo is nothing. It's part one to nothing. It's all set up for what is essentially nothing. We get bugger all of Joe Martin's Doctor, which is a crime. That should have been Flux <laughs> or the rest of series 12. It's like, what was the point? Also, Captain Jack came back. Okay. Why? God, doctor, it's the don't trust the Cyberman. Well, thanks, Jack. But she does anyway. Like, <laughs> it's not. It's an F. Go fuck yourself. Joe Martin deserves so much better, dude. Jesus Christ. I, I genuinely prefer her Doctor to Whitaker. Like, <laughs> and her, her costume as well. So much better than Jodie's. Anyway. Praxius. B. I don't remember anything about it. Can you hear me? Can I? Uh, it's a, between an A and a B, if I remember rightly. Oh, it's quite a lot between an A and a B. This is harder than I thought. I thought this would be, I thought an entire table would be enough space, but apparently not. <laughs> the Haunting of Villa Diodati. Excellent episode, love that. Very spooky scary. Actually, yes, I said earlier that, that it's very rare that a Cyberman is actually scary. The Lone Cyberman, specifically in this, 
Terrifying. I love that. I hope it scared the children. Ascension of the Cybermen and the Timeless Child, however, can die in a hole. What is it with Whitaker series and ending on a weak note? That's at the bottom, on the floor. It's nothing. I don't even I don't care about the Timeless Child reveal, and even if it did make you know, did excuse me. Like it doesn't come back and do anything. It's just a watch that Whitaker doesn't open. And I agree she shouldn't have opened it. But like, really? And she never spoke to Yaz about it? That bugs me. I don't get the Yaz and 13 ship. It's the same as Ten and Rose, except at least Ten and Rose had fun. <laughs> like they showed multiple times that they were just having a giggle, like at the beginning of Impossible Planet or New Earth. But like Yaz and 13 never had a moment of like enjoying each other's company, except for the very end of Power of the Doctor when they're having that ice cream. Or I guess in Legend of the Sea Devils. I don't know. It's like, it's, I don't get it. But that's another issue. Timeless Child and Ascension of the Cybermen. Nothing. Disgusting. Hey. Revolution of the Daleks is a B. It's fine, I guess. Not as good as Resolution. Not even close. Uh, I like the Dalek Civil War. As a big fan of Remembrance, I like that a lot. Uh, I feel like it was just an excuse to get the Bronze Daleks back, which is ridiculous. <laughs> I, thought, like, I, I wasn't a fan of the design of Resolution and Revolution, but... Really? Cowards! And finally, Flux, uh, series 13 and its accompanying specials that I just realised I haven't made cards for. The Halloween Apocalypse! <laughs> Set up for things that are just kind of okay. B. War of the Sontarans, however. Love that. I love Mary C. Cole. Really cool uh, historical figure that I'm glad got the time of day. So I'm putting in S, because also the Sontarans are so good. Like, I don't know the guy who plays the main general. But he was excellent, and I mean, I want you to ride a horse. Oh, second horse, put it back on. Like that stuff is excellent. <laughs> like that was with peak Whittaker. When I think like Thirteenth Doctor moments, that is the my favourite of the pops to mind. Once upon time, however, is an F, and I hate it. I think it's kind of boring, but I like how kind of dreamlike and weird it is. That's between a B and a, a B and an F personally, but I will respect it. Village of the Angels, that's a solid A, I'd say. I love how creepy it is, but it's not quite, like, when I think of the Angels, this isn't really where I go. Maybe it needs a rewatch. Survivors of the Flux. What was Survivors, what, what? I'm trying to do this all off memory. Survivors of the Flux and the, Va and the Vanquishers. Was that not one it Wow, I'm really drawing a blank. I don't remember what happens. In, I mean, I remember not liking the Vanquishers. I'm going to put them both in F because I genuinely don't remember what these were. <laughs> also, I didn't like that there were three Whitakers. Like, unlike where there was two Smiths in the Almost People, it, it's, it doesn't work. I don't... It, there, yeah. Legend of the Sea Friends. So, Eve of the Daleks, I think, is a solid B. I think the concept's strong. I would love to see it as a video game, as opposed to a TV show. Ashling B's great. However, there's one thing that really weighs it down. The guy. He's awful. And I don't mean the performance. I don't remember if that's bad. Correct me if I'm wrong. But his character sucks. He's creepy and doesn't deserve the girl. It goes in B. Legend of the Sea Devils, on the other hand, is just straight F. It's garbage. <laughs> we were all so weirdly excited for the Sea Devils to return just because of how cool the um, look is. Fun fact, I actually had an insider knowledge and knew the Sea Devils were going to come back about a year or two before the episode. Not to brag. Not going to tell you uh, who that was because I feel like getting him in trouble. Or her. But, anyway, Sea Devils F. Go fuck yourself. Actually, no. You know what? It's so much of a disappointment. It's going on the floor. And finally... We're up to date with Power of the Doctor. This one I've rewatched a couple times now and truly don't know where to put it. Dare I be so bold, I might put it in S because I had a ruddy good time with it. Ace was great, as was Tegan. It barely included Whittaker, which is an interesting choice for her final story. But at the same time, I liked it a lot. So I'm actually going to put it in S. And with that, thank actual fuck. <laughs> Because we are done ranking every single episode of New Who, and this looks insane. <laughs> wow, that is mental. Okay, well, as I talk about this, you will be seeing some close-ups of, of what I've made here. I would really like to hear your thoughts uh, and uh, 
maybe even make your own videos uh, personally ranking uh, all of these in this in the same style. I would love to see where things sort of mix, mix and match. I know there will be a, a few divisive choices here, which is always good. It's it's good that we all have our own opinions, uh, not just parroting uh, those of reviewers or, or people we like. I truly hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun, as I did with the character options ranking. I, I want to do more, because I just find them very entertaining to sort of ramble Mad Lib style. Thank you so much for watching. I, uh, again, I truly hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you probably for Doctor Who Road Phase 6. I'm working on that, did you know that? I'm enjoying myself a lot. That sounded sarcastic. I'm just too tired. <laughs> Thank you and goodbye. Don't forget to subscribe to the official Jack Reeves YouTube channel.